Construction on the 1893 World's Fair begins on a cold winter day in Chicago. The volume of work to be done is staggering. In effect, an entire city has to be built in just 27 months. There's only one architectural company capable of leading such an enormous project. Burnham & Root is the most sought after firm in town. Daniel Burnham and John Wellborn Root were kind of the, if I can use this phrase, the kind of studs of the skyscraper era. These were the two guys who ran the most successful firm, who were building the most successful and artful and handsome buildings in Chicago. Olmsted chooses a 600-acre plot of land just south of the city on the shores of Lake Michigan. There, Burnham and Root lay out plans to construct 200 buildings that will house more than 60,000 exhibits from around the world. But the swampy, sandy land makes construction difficult. There are pictures of the excavation underway, and people were using wheelbarrows, long trains of wheelbarrows. Burnham handpicks 10 of the country's top architects to design the jewel of the fair, a collection of majestic white buildings so enchanting the fair will carry its nickname into the future, the White City. And then, tragedy. Sadly, Root got sick and died right after they were chosen to be the guys in charge of the fair. It's hidden in history, but it was Root who was the sort of creative genius of that firm. He was the guy who was a visionary. Now Burnham has to shoulder the responsibility of constructing the fair alone. It's as if a shadow has already fallen over the fair. But the real darkness is still to come. Just a few miles away from the fairgrounds, H.H. Holmes is building his own dream project a World's Fair hotel he'll use to rent out rooms to fairgoers. On the outside, it's a large hotel with retail stores on the first floor, 35 rental rooms on the second, and Holmes's office on the third. But inside, it's much more. The house is actually sort of, the way to think of it is sort of a physical representation of Holmes himself a very complicated uh, being that isn't at all uh, inside what it appears to be on the outside. In May 1892, a beautiful young woman from Indiana, Emmeline Sagrand, comes to Chicago. A Dr. H. H. Holmes is willing to pay well for a stenographer, so she goes to work for him. She finds her new employer incredibly charming. He knew what women needed. He knew how to appeal to them how to make them feel at ease. Whatever that skill is, he had it in spades and used it every opportunity he could. But it's not what it seems. Holmes asks her to marry him. Then one day finds a way to get her into a room in his hotel. It's one of the rooms he's designed himself. Airtight and windowless. It won't take long before she runs out of air. One of the good doctor's next victims will be locked in another room he's taken pleasure in designing. It has gas jets inside that he can control from a secret hiding place. Occasionally, he'll stop to listen as she fights for her last breath. Over the months, Holmes will use his hotel to kill other victims, gassing some victims, performing experiments on others, and occasionally dissecting some while they're still alive. Power and control are central to Holmes' methods. He adds new rooms to his house of horrors, rushing to finish before the fair opens and new victims arrive in town. He designs it himself. He's his own uh, general contractor. And what he does is he brings in different teams of craftsmen to work on the building. 
he fires them, brings in another team, fires them. So there really isn't anyone who really understands everything that's in this building. Holmes does whatever firing and hiring he has to do, then rides his bike the short distance to the World's Fair construction site. Whether it's to mark the progress of the event that will bring him his prey, or because he's simply amazed by the sheer magnitude of the construction is anyone's guess. Like thousands of other Chicagoans, he pays the admission fee and settles in to watch the spectacle. People took excursion trains out there on Sundays and they wanted to see it, maybe even see Burnham on the site. There are 40,000 laborers, 36,000 railroad cars of material, 75 million feet of wood, and thousands of tons of iron and steel. You could walk around and the artists had their sheds. You went in there and you could, you could see an architect uh, or a sculptor is more like it, or a whole sculpture shop. The kind of thing you might have seen in 15th century Florence. The largest, most complex project by far is the building of the White City. Organizers want it to be so beautiful, so grand, that stories about it will be told for centuries. The team invents a technique called spray painting to paint the large buildings. A month before the fair is set to open, there are still half-built structures. Shipments are late. A 264-foot Ferris wheel that can carry 2,000 passengers still has to be erected. While it was questionable if Burnham would finish the fair on time, a serial killer was making firm plans to put his mark on history.